so it's been a while since you've used the Quick and Simplify budgeting app. It's been several months and your budget is well, messy. I'm going to show you how to fix a messy budget, even if it's been a long time since you've opened up the app. Let's get started. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Justine. I get it. Several months have gone by and you just never sat down to look at your finances. Or maybe you got caught scrolling social media as one does. Nevertheless, your finances need your attention because you feel behind, you feel disorganized, and we wanna get back to that feeling of confidence and being in control. So let's hop into the app where I'm gonna show you how to fix up your budget so that you can keep things current again. All right, so the first thing that you'll do when you get logged into Simplify is you wanna make things current, meaning you wanna review all of your transactions and reconcile by account and actually go through and make sure that things are categorized correctly. You also wanna find any duplicates. So what I'm going to do is I'm over here in transaction. I'm using the web app. You can do this on your phone too. I find that maybe opening up your laptop is probably going to be easier for you to do this a little bit faster, but you do you if the if the mobile app feels like a better fit. You're gonna go under transactions and then you're gonna see a list of all the archive transaction activity inside of your account. Now I'm gonna start with the most current month. That to me feels pretty good. Obviously you're gonna wanna do it for all of the months listed if it's truly been a long time. But let me just start with the most current month and then I'm going to review and make sure these things are categorized correctly. If you're using business and personal. It's also going to show your business transactions and expenses as well. You'll want to make sure that those are categorized too. So we've got T-Mobile. We've got, I see a Venmo that is categorized incorrectly. It's shopping and it should not be shopping. This is kids. And I'm just going to go line by line. And actually I'm going to mark this as recurring because this is a recurring expense for me. I'm just gonna call this nanny 736. This is gonna be kids. We'll call it daycare. And then the frequency of this is every week. So did you know if you create a recurring expense, you can create it as a bill or a subscription and then change the frequency amount. So here, this is a weekly expense for me. I'm gonna start it on, let's take a look. I do every Friday. So this would be actually, I don't know why it went for, oh, because it started categorizing as a month. It's going to be every week. So starting Friday, July 18th, Friday. There we go. Create. Got it. Now let's make sure that transaction got categorized correctly. Okay, now we're all squared up. A lot of the Venmo transactions for me, I have to go into my Venmo account and actually make sure and understand exactly what that transaction is. So what I do is I just have my phone open with me and then I go through and actually see what happened and when. It's entertainment, groceries, got a couple of refunds, utilities, preschool, paycheck, restaurants, hy V. this was not gifts. Well, yeah, technically this was gifts. This was gifts. Did you know you can actually click into the cell here into the category and then you can start typing in what category it's supposed to go in and then it will auto populate for you. So shopping, hy V. this was actually groceries. We'll change that. And actually you can customize some of these subcategories so that you know, okay, Nordstrom's clothing wasn't just clothing, it was Justine's clothing, so there you go. We've got Gomer's, which is not bars, that is... So as you're going through this, you kind of have to know, <laughs> okay, what did I spend money on and how do I categorize things correctly? And if you're working with your partner on this, then you'll want to make sure that they're going in and categorizing any of their transactions. Did you know that you can actually add your partner to the same account? So all you need to do is head over to settings and then hit spaces and sharing. You're going to find your financial space, hit the three dots and then click invite member. Then you can input their name and email address and now they have instant access to the same same budget, especially if you guys are doing joint checking, joint savings, joint everything, then you want to make sure that they have access to this as well. 
All right, but going back through my transactions, I think I was almost at the end of July. So let's see, yes. Let's call this transportation because that was a toll expense. Shopping, Chase Sapphire. This was a transfer. Yeah, transfer Chase Sapphire, good. Kids activities. See what this Venmo for 70 bucks was. This was clothing. Transfers, make sure the transfers have all cleared. Looks good. Another Venmo. I'm finding an annual subscription. So this is my Chase Sapphire membership fee. So if you find any of these subscriptions, you want to make sure that they are included as part of your overall spending plan. So I can mark this again as recurring. Annual membership fee. I actually can name this like Chase Sapphire annual membership fee. And this is re repeating every year. So I went through all of July's expenses and transactions and just made sure that they were categorized correctly. Now you'll want to go ahead and do that for every single month that you haven't actively been inside of the app. So go ahead and do that activity first. Then what you're going to do is you're going to head over to your spending plan. Now this spending plan and the way that it looks recently got an update and I am loving it. Now you'll have a separate section for your bills outside of your plan spend and outside of what's showing for income. So you can see what's included for the month and what is upcoming, of course, just like it was before, but now you're going to see what kind of bills have been included here. So now I can see, all right, I did my fee subscription. I've did, done my mortgage. I've paid for preschool, but I still have some utilities that are coming up and I still have other things for preschool coming up. So that's under bills. If I go under to plan spending, you want to make sure that all of the plan spending has been accounted for and you'll want to take a look at other spending. Other spending is going to include things that you didn't have categories for. Now, a pro note here is that not everything in other spending needs to live in plan spend. Sometimes things just pop up that are one-time things, but I do see a bill here that needs to be included as a recurring thing. So we're going to go in and create, well, let's make sure that this is not already linked to something. Water one. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So I linked my water bill. So that's done. This I want to include, let's see my phone bill definitely needs to be part of it. T-Mobile, got that. This is also a subscription. So I'm gonna make this recurring. Let's see, July 10th. So this is gonna be new. Auto match every month, create. Oh, let's make sure this is categorized as a subscription. So here's where I'm just kind of going through other spend and just making sure that these things are truly where they're supposed to belong. Like this one I know is a subscription. We're going to mark this as recurring home services every month. And this is I'm going to do day of the week. It's on Wednesdays starting on the 6th. This I like to put bars and restaurants in the same category. To me, they just kind of all blend together. And this is definitely part of shopping. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to go into plan spend because I see there's a flag here notifying me about shopping. I think it's just going to have to live that way because <laughs> we definitely went overboard for July. Other spend goals left this month is $1,622. So that's fine. The bills look good. The plan spend. Also, did you know with plan spend, if you have any unused money, you can either release that those funds back into your budget and then you'd have that to play with, or you can have it roll over. So I like to do this for fun money. So I have $200 that I plan to budget for, for fun money. So things like, um, going to the movies, going golfing, 
any kind of concert thing that I want to do, tickets, baseball tickets, you name it. If it if it sounds fun, it belongs in the fun money category. So what you're going to do is if you want to roll over any uh, amount, you can I've already got this set up to have rollover, but you can change the current rollover amount instead of using a calculated amount or you can go to edit sorry, go over to edit expense series here, and then you can toggle on roll remaining balance over each month. So if I have any funds available, and right now I have $172 to spend, if I don't spend a dollar more for this month, then that $172 is gonna roll over and add it to my planned spend of $200. So I would have $372 to play with for the month of August, the next month rolling over. I can also see what has been assigned to entertainment or to fund money, because that's the category I put it under already and make sure that's accounted for. So Sprouts is a grocery store, so that is not entertainment. I'm going to label that as groceries and take that out. Actually, now I have more money available to spend $192. I'm gonna get out of this. Note that you can toggle the view of how you want to look at things. I like the tiles. I'm a visual person, but you can also do it more in this listicle version of where you're seeing everything kind of condensed together. You're still getting the visuals, but it almost feels like half visual, half spreadsheet a little bit. So you can kind of see and quickly go through, okay, blue means this is what I've spent. Light blue is what's left over. We've got green signa signaling to me that I've got rollover money in there. So this is a really great way to review all of that spending. Okay, so unfortunately, I hate just seeing red because I'm a visual person, but I'm gonna have to leave that there just so that I know that this is tapped out. That category is not one that I wanna mess with anymore. I can see other areas like this investing, stash, and Robin Hood. This is pretty much done. In fact, I'm going to edit this. This is gonna be more like 150. Car maintenance looks good, fun looks good, gas looks good. Gifts are good, however, I could make a goal for gifts just to make sure, like I always set aside m money monthly for Christmas, so we could set that up. Groceries looks great because I did this whole rollover thing. And as you can see, groceries is just, ugh, it kills me every single time. I'm like, how are we spending over $1,000 as a family of four? And I have two little ones and you know, kids don't eat anything. <laughs> they eat like, you know, two bites of dinner and then they just want mac and cheese, which doesn't cost much. But I'm like, wow, groceries are so expensive, especially those trips to Costco. But gotta love Costco. All of that is included here and I like using the rollover feature for this so I feel like okay I still do have money set aside in my plan spending for this. All right groceries, hair, home improvement. We've definitely been spending money there. Investing, restaurants. Restaurants I could kind of increase actually. So I'm gonna edit this and let's increase to 350. Also, you're gonna see this suggestion of $413. That's based off of spending over the last six months. But what if I wanna be a little bit more intentional with that particular category in spending? And I'm gonna challenge myself, okay, what if I can keep it under $350? instead of the 400. And I can also make sure that what's already been categorized as restaurants is truly what we're going for. So let's make sure homestead, yes, 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 yes. Okay, this looks good actually. All right, gonna go back, restaurants and shopping. If you see anything missing, this is where you can go into other spend and then go ahead and then move that over into planned spending and then that has a home base. You can make that as part of the plan spend and then that's gonna carry over for the next month. So if I go over to August and even though it's not the August yet or whatever month you happen to be coming up against, you can kind of make changes every single month based off of what's happening for that month. You might have a vacation, you might have um, an annual subscription or a birthday coming up. You can make detailed and specific changes to your plan spend for that particular month. So it fluctuates just as your life does.
Don't forget you can also head over to this bills and income section and you can also filter your view by looking at all of your bills and your income coming in for particular months. And I love this calendar view that kind of shows you exactly what's happening when and where. So we've got you know, T-Mobile was due, um, preschool tuition was due on Monday, but then we've also got nanny dues paid on Friday. We've got stuff coming out um, every day of the week. Looks good, except for Thursday is a payday. So, so you can get a calendar view of what things look like and how your money is moving every single day of the week, which I really love. Again, it's a really visual, really great visual reminder to let you know how things are moving and flowing. All right, so that was a rundown of how you can clean up your budget using the Quick and Simplify budgeting app. How did you do? Let me know in the comments. Were there any things that were tripping you up? I think the biggest thing is making sure that any kind of expense that is a reoccurring thing for you is that you mark it as such inside of the app so that it, you don't have to continue manually doing that. Set it up to create rules so that you know every single time this transaction comes through. And actually, let me show you how to do that real quickly. All right, so from the menu, you're gonna head over to settings and then you're going to click on rules. Now you can do the rules through transactions if there's an individual transaction and you wanna set up a rule, or you can go over to settings and then click this add rule button, and then you can create whatever you want. You can do it by renaming the payee or you can categorize by category for that specific payee. So these are some of the little tips in automating those transactions so that you don't have to manually do it each time. You can still jump back in and manage your money very easily with the Quick and Simplify budgeting app. We will leave a link to that below if you've not yet used it, <laughs> but I, I'm hoping that you are still using it. So let me know in the comments below, is there a particular area of the budget that you are wanting to see or needing a demo of how to do something? Let me know in the comments. If you like this one, give it a big thumbs up and I'll catch you in the next one.